Guys, I've said a, f- a fair few times now, I believe that Chinese electric cars will come to the US EV market. I believe they're going to come through the back door. So do other experts through Mexico. The Chinese are coming to Mexico and they're dominating the car market in Mexico. They've said they're willing to sell below cost in order to take over that market. It's happening. But that's sort of a niche type thing, going to the Me- Mexico and bringing your EV from China across the border into the US, that's happening. But there's also another way that Chinese EVs are likely to enter the United States. Here's what that other, well, essentially backdoor is going to be. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Now, coming to you live here from Bangladesh, I've just seen this article here, Clean Technica, and the Detroit Free Press have mentioned this. Ethan Dodd said this, doomsday prediction, Chinese electric vehicles don't just pose a market threat to Tesla, they could also be a weapon of war. When the history of the early 21st century is written, it will surely focus on the war for global supremacy between two great nations, China and the United States. Now, Steve Hanley says on Clean Technica that as a device to get people to read what comes next, that's uh, it's pretty good. But when you look at this issue on a deeper level, Dodd is not talking about a war that involves tanks, planes, nuclear war, nothing like that, boots on the ground, armies involved, nothing, nothing of that nature, which because if there is a war like that, we're all dead. Nuclear bombs would destroy all of us. He's talking about economic competition, kind of like what the United States has been doing um, very, very well since 1945. I mean, the biggest companies in the world, pretty much all in the United States. But in terms of the global automotive industry, China is clearly taking over that. Dodd says electric cars will be a big part of this new competition, this new race for global supremacy. And the Chinese have a very clear lead. It's the most humbling thing I've ever seen, said Ford CEO Jim Farley, when he was making, uh, basically, they were putting together material for a biography of Elon Musk. And this is what Jim Farley said. We are in a global competition with China. If we lose this, we do not have a future at Ford. If we lose this, we do not have a future at Ford. Even Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford, is saying, if we lose this battle with China, Ford will be bankrupt. There will be no Ford in the future. It's not just me saying this stuff. Even the CEO of Ford is saying it. We saw this coming for years, said Jim Farley. We knew that the Chinese would be the major player for us globally. For now, one of the biggest factors shielding American manufacturers, says Steve, like Ford from Chinese competition, is the belief in many parts of the US government that cars made in China would be little more than surveillance agents for the Chinese Communist Party, which I personally think this is all um, mythical, emotional stuff. I don't really see how cars just generally driving down the streets in the US, how that's really going to give China anything that they need. I mean, there's uh, think about it, right? There is drones everywhere. There's there's way better ways to collect information than just having cars randomly driving around on streets. Anyhow, they say that these cars feature sophisticated surveillance systems that rely on cameras and digital sensors that could allow them to capture data that could be passed onto the Chinese military. And then the Chinese military would do what exactly with that data? I don't know. Anyway, this is not the first time the free press has published scare stories about Chinese tech. In 2023, it reported that the largest supplier of LiDAR equipment to US vehicle makers is Hesai and suggested the data captured by these sensors, some of which are installed on trucks used on US military bases, could be watched by the president of China and his cronies when they are not busy running the country. Yeah, you see kind of how silly this all sounds really. Anyway, based on similar fears, President Biden banned the import of any Chinese car that can be classified as a connected vehicle, meaning basically any car that can be connected to the internet, meaning all Chinese cars. Now, they also banned any Chinese car that um, shares data with devices outside of the vehicle. That's what General Motors does, right? And they sell that data to uh, other companies. Anyway, also they banned... Chinese cars with software that can be updated automatically from over the air, like an iPhone. Um, And most Chinese cars can do over the air updates. So yeah, they're all banned. In a statement, Biden's Commerce Secretary, 
Gina Raimondo said, when foreign adversaries build software to make a vehicle, that means it can be used for surveillance, it can be remotely controlled, which threatens the privacy and safety of Americans on the road. In an extreme situation, a foreign adversary could shut down or take control of all their vehicles operating in the United States, all at the same time, causing crashes, blocking roads, and basically destroying middle Americans. No, I, I, I added that last part in, but you know, yeah. Now, Dodd says this, China bet big on joint ventures with American, German, and Japanese car companies, hoping they would provide the Chinese companies the ability and the information to develop their own Chinese-made products. And the truth is, China did do this. They did learn from automakers from the West, but recently they haven't just been learning from them. They've been making their own stuff, trailblazing and bringing out tech that I think is way more advanced than anything being made in the US or, and I mean, obviously uh, Lucid believes their tech is the best in the world, but let's be real. I mean, the the charging speeds, the the batteries, the all the different co components going into the powertrains coming out of China, I think show that that is more advanced than anything coming out of the United States at this point in time. In 2019, Tesla built its Gigafactory in Shanghai. It took a Western automaker to bring the sizzle, said to Lee, the founder of Sino Auto Insights in Detroit, he said this, Chinese people love entrepreneurs. After Tesla came ashore in Shanghai, the quality of Chinese EVs rose dramatically as other Chinese companies borrowed heavily from what Tesla was doing. I don't think BYD happens without Tesla, said Tu Li. The year Tesla started making cars in China, BYD was selling less than 500,000 new energy vehicles, which include both plug-in hybrids and fully electric cars. By 2024, BYD was selling 4.3 million cars, and this year, they're likely to hit more than 5 million. Tesla was once the market leader in China. BYD boasts a 34% market share compared to 6% for Tesla. In April, Clean Technica reported that Republican Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas said, China doesn't innovate, it steals. Now, this is crazy. China doesn't innovate its deals. I don't think anyone watching this channel really believes that as an absolute statement. Clearly, China does innovate. It copies some things, but sometimes it copies things, but then it innovates on that copy, it makes it actually better than the original version. And I think that's actually really smart. I like to think of that as being just simply postmodern. Anyhow, he went on to say, Jim Farley said this, they do things really well that we need to learn. And Tu Li said, the pupil is now the teacher. Sounds kind of like Confucianism. The national security concerns, are, are they real? Does the US government really believe what they're saying? Well, in May, the House Committee in, on Homeland Security announced that it would investigate BYD, requesting documents related to its data security practices and operational footprint. And the current failed administration is eviscerating EV-friendly policies in the US wherever, wherever it finds them, which suggests electric cars will have a very difficult time in the American market. Now, Dodd actually makes this an interesting assessment. He says this, America's so-called president continues to ignore a law passed by Congress, which the president himself signed, banning TikTok unless it is sold to an American company. Now, that law was passed because of concerns that TikTok, which is owned by a Chinese company, could be scooping up data on American citizens and sending that data to China. Dodd says the Biden administration banned NVIDIA from exporting certain high-end chips to China because of national security concerns. But again, Trump ignored those concerns and cut a deal that allowed NVIDIA to sell to China so long as the US government got a 15% cut on the revenue. Then he says this, and so it would be perfectly within character for Donald Trump to decide that the threat of Chinese EVs is overblown. <laughs> I believe he's right. What if as part of the trade deal that administration officials are currently negotiating with their Chinese counterparts, he allowed them to be sold, as in Chinese EVs, on American shores? If he ignored the same national security fears that have caused allies to ban them, the irony is that electric vehicles are indispensable to the industries America most needs if it is to revive manufacturing the way that Trump actually wants. But Trump may, 
um, in his what well, clearly some would believe his naivety, actually do a deal with China to allow Chinese EV makers to sell EVs in the United States as long as Trump makes money from the process. Could this happen? Maybe. Bill Russo, CEO of Automobility, a Shanghai-based strategy firm, told Dodd batteries, rare earth magnets, AI-driven autonomy, and software to find mobility, these are the engines of future economic and geopolitical power. Without a thriving EV industry at home, America risks forfeiting its leadership in the foundational technologies of the next industrial age. According to Andrew Polk, who consults for some of the world's largest companies and investors, he said, if we force China to build its cars here, as we did to Japan in the 1980s, within 10 years, Americans will stop chanting by American and realize these cars are cheaper, they're better, and you just have to go and get one. I don't know if I agree, but that's very possible. So, is Jim Farley right? I mean, are Chinese EVs and Chinese technology is it that much better than what's being made in the United States? And the second issue I, have, I question I have here is, is it likely that Donald Trump will do this deal with China? Will he, um, for the sake of the almighty dollar, of tax revenue, and um, of appearing to be powerful and knowledgeable, will Donald Trump go and say, you know what, allow them in, they can sell them here, as long as they pay us, as long as, you know, quid pro, pro quo, we want this much, 20% on taxes, 30% on taxes, and then you can have the market. If that were to happen, General Motors, Ford, and anybody, basically any American car companies left, whether that's Jeep or Ram, they're all going to be gone. I mean, they're all going to be in big, big trouble. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Bye-bye.